Thank you, Lord, that you are going to bring about tremendous change, transformation in the hearts and lives of your people in the powerful and matchless name of Jesus Christ. Well, friends, I trust that you are having a wonderful evening, even as we get ready to receive from the word of the Lord. And we always consider this a tremendous privilege to share the word of God, to minister from this platform. And I know that God is indeed going to do awesome things in our hearts, in our lives this evening. Amen. So we want to uh, jump right in to our time of sharing then we're going to have a time of ministry. And this evening, I want to talk to us about being aware of the scoffers that are going to emerge in these last and closing days. Yes, friends, there are going to be an emergence of scoffers coming on the face of the earth, even as we are within these uh, last uh, and closing days before the Lord's return. And I want to direct your attention this evening to a passage in 2 Peter chapter 3 that speaks about this. And listen to what the Apostle Peter said in 2 Peter chapter 3. Uh, 2 Peter chapter 3, reading from verse 3, he says, Knowing this first, that scoffers, who is a scoffer? A scoffer is a mocker, you know, someone who, you know, makes light or, you know, brings, um, you know, ridicule against the things of God. Listen to what Peter says. He says, knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days. So they are going to come in the last days and that's one of the thing that's one of the ways that we will also know that we are in the last days because what you're going to see is a rise in the number of scoffers coming on the scene what are they going to say what are these scoffers going to say let's hear what peter says he says they're going to be walking according to their own lust they're going to be walking according to their own loss. So these scoffers, these mockers, they're going to be full of themselves. They're going to be weighed down in loss and sin and immorality. And listen to what they're going to be saying. He says, and they will be saying, where is the promise of his coming? So that is what they're going to be scoffing about. That is what they're going to be mocking about. That is what they're going to be ridiculing. He says, For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. So you're going to have all of these people coming on the scene saying, You know, long I'm hearing about the Lord's return. How long I'm hearing about the second coming and nothing has come to pass. So these scoffers, these mockers, they're going to be bringing ridicule to the, 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 the reality of the second coming. In other words, they're going to be making light of it. They're going to be, uh, you know, almost trying to make you look foolish for believing in the return of the Lord. They're going to be saying, uh, you know, we've been hearing about that for so long. You really believe in that? And nothing has happened. Life has continued as normal. That's what they're going to be saying. And so I want to put you on notice, friends. You need to be aware of the scoffers. And these scoffers, they exist all over. They exist even within the ranks of the church. Even within the ranks of the church. There are people who, you know, 
They have a form of godliness, but they don't actually believe that the Lord is going to physically return. Yes, there are some people, they don't really believe that. And the thing is this, how you know what someone believes is not so much by what they say, but by how they behave. That's how you know what someone truly believes. If you want to know what someone truly believes, watch their actions, watch their behaviors, watch how they conduct themselves because words are cheap. Because Jesus himself said, many will say, Lord, Lord, they will draw nigh unto me with their lips, but with their hearts, they are very far from me. Because people could say one thing, but how you know where someone truly stands is by their actions. Jesus says, by their fruit, you will know them. Watch their actions. Watch how they live. Watch how they carry about themselves. That is how you're going to know what someone really believes. And yes, there's going to be many scoffers coming on the scene, making light of the second coming, trying to make you look foolish for believing in the second coming. Uh, some of these people may, be, may even be people that are close to you, people that you know. They may be friends, they may be family and so on. You need to be aware. You need to be on the lookout for these coffers. And you cannot afford to allow uh, their ridicule, their making light, their making trivial of this serious issue. You know, you cannot afford to let them throw you off track. You cannot afford to let them derail your faith. Because the Apostle Peter says, he says they forget a couple things. And I want to highlight what they forget. Peter says they forget a couple things. What are these things they forget? If you continue reading on uh, from verse 5, you'll see what Peter talks about. But essentially, he says what they forget is the fact that this return of the Lord, which is a cosmic event, and by the term cosmic event, we mean that it's an event that is going to affect the whole world. It's going to affect the whole of creation. It's cosmic. It has, you know, far-reaching implications. And Peter is saying, one thing that these scoffers forget is that the God that we serve is a God of integrity. He's a God who keeps his promises. And Peter, you know, inserted in the next verse, he says there was another cosmic event that they forget about. A cosmic event that was announced by the Lord through his servant, Noah. In fact, Noah had preached to the people of his day for 150 years, telling them, warning them to get ready to come into the ark, to repent and to come into the ark that he was building. And they scoffed at him. They refuse to believe. You know, and what I find interesting is that many of the, 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 the Bible writers, they compare the time of Noah to the time that we are living in. That time period just before the return of the Lord. In fact, Jesus said, in the days before the return of the Son of Man, it's going to be just like in the days of Noah, where they will be eating and drinking and giving in marriage. Everybody will be continuing with life as normal. That is how it was in the day of Noah. He preached for 150 years. And they scoffed at him. They rejected what he had to say. They said, you know, long, how long are you going to talk about that? Old man, imagine that. 150 years. And there was no um, sign or no evidence of what Noah was talking about. Peter said they forgot about that. But then a certain day came. It started off just like any other day where the Lord gave a command to Noah and his family to get into the ark after he had built, completed the, the construction of the ark. A, a directive came from the Lord to get into the ark. And the Bible tells us that God shut the door to the ark. 
And I imagine the scoffers, they would have seen Noah going into the ark. They continue with life as normal, continue to, you know, you know, live their lives without a care in the world. And then, all of a sudden, they noticed something. They started to get wet. They started to get wet. It started to rain. That was the first time that rain fell in the history of mankind. Yes, that was the first time that rain fell. And then, what started as a light pitter-patter, it, became, it turned into a torrential rainfall. And I am sure they probably started knocking on the door. Let us in. Let us in. But the door was shut. And there was nothing that they could do. No one could open that door. Because whenever God closes a door, no man, no demon, no one can open the doors that the Lord has shut. And they were shut out. And they were you know, all of them perished. They were taken away in the flood. It was a cosmic event that literally destroyed all of life on planet Earth. The only ones who were saved were those who were within the safety of the ark. And what Peter is saying, that these scoffers, they choose to forget that cosmic event of the flooding of the the earth and what peter was saying really is that this god that we serve he's a god of integrity and if he says something it is going to come to pass yes it may seem like it's taking a long time but it is going to come to pass and that is something that you know these scoffers need to take note of because the scoffers in the day of Noah, they paid a heavy price. They lost their lives. They were swept away by the floods and the torrential rains. And they perished because of their scoffing ways. And the same thing is going to happen to these scoffers who are going to emerge unless they repent. That is what Peter was saying. They forget that the God that we serve, he is a God of integrity. And Peter goes on to say, that's not the only cosmic event that is going to happen. He says there's another cosmic event on the horizon. It's a cosmic event that is going to, you know, uh, once again the whole earth will be destroyed. The earth will be renovated on that day of judgment. That day when the earth will be destroyed by fire. It's going to be another cosmic event. And then Peter, in going on, he says, there's a couple things that we, the believers, must not forget. So firstly, he's saying that the scoffers, they forget that the God that we serve is a God of integrity. He does fulfill his promises. But then he goes on to say that we, the believers, need to also not forget a couple important things because yes it has you know it has you know time has gone on it has been 2000 years since the first advent of Jesus Christ and many of the early disciples they you know had the expectation that Jesus was going to return soon but 2000 years has passed does that mean that the word of God is of no effect does that mean that the word of God will not come to pass? And Peter is saying no and a thousand times no. And he's saying to us, the born again believers, those of us who are looking forward to the day of the Lord, he says there are a couple things that you must not forget. What are these things that Peter is saying we must not forget? Firstly, he's saying that God does not measure time the same way that we measure time. So what may appear to be a lengthy period of time for you and I is really a short period of time with the Lord. And Peter puts it this way in verse 8 of, of, of 2 Peter 3. Listen to what he says. He says, Beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord, 
One day is as a thousand years. And a thousand years as one day. So God does not measure time the same way that we measure time. God sits outside of the domain of time. He sits in the domain of eternity. And so what Peter is saying, what to us would be a thousand years in the eyes of Almighty God, it's just like one day. So 2,000 years has passed since Jesus Christ first came to planet Earth. And to you and I, that seems like a very long time. I mean, we cannot even fathom 2,000 years. I mean, no one even lives up to, to be a fraction of 2,000 years. But what Peter is saying, to God, that is just like two days. That is to tell you. The second thing Peter says, we must not forget. We must not forget. In other words, you must remember that God does not measure time the same way that we measure time. He sits outside of the time domain. Second thing Peter is saying, not to forget, and we need to remember, is that the God that we serve, he's a God of long-suffering. He's a long-suffering God. In other words, he suffers long. Listen to how he put it in verse 9. He says, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise in other words what peter is saying yes god did make a promise that the day of the lord will come to pass but although a lot of time has elapsed and it has not come to pass it does not mean that god is slack no that's not the reason why god has delayed his second return no what peter is saying listen to what peter is saying he says god is not slack concerning his promise as some count slackness why because god is a god of integrity he keeps his promises but listen to what peter says but he is long suffering toward us he's long suffering why has god delayed his return because he's long suffering not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance and friends this is something that we ought to rejoice about because if god had come back earlier or uh, earlier than you know than, than 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 the time that we are in now there are many people who would have been lost there are many people who would have not made it and so one of the reasons why God has delayed his return is because he loves us and because of this great love that he has for you and I he is prepared to suffer long he's prepared to wait to give you an opportunity to repent to give your family an opportunity to repent to give those who are outside of a relationship with Almighty God. He suffers long because he's giving everyone an opportunity to repent so that they too can come in to the ark of safety. What an awesome God we serve. What a loving God we serve. He suffers long because he does not want us to perish. He gives us opportunity he gives us chance after chance to repent that is why the lord has not returned yet because he's giving us an opportunity to repent and so friends you need to remember that you need to remember that even as we look forward to the day of the lord even as we look forward to the return of the lord remember that God does not measure time as we measure time, right? A day with the Lord is as a thousand years and a thousand years is as a day. And secondly, God is long-suffering. And thirdly, thirdly, the other thing you need to remember is that God is a God of integrity. He keeps His promises. He keeps His promises. So we need to remember that. And, and Peter, in concluding this chapter, listen to what he says. 
He says, Therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things, be diligent to be found by him in peace, without spot and blameless, and consider that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, as also our beloved brother Paul. So, what Peter is saying is to be steadfast, to hold on to the word of the Lord, hold on, you know, continue to be blameless, continue to be spotless. Do not allow yourself to be derailed by the scoffers and by their ridicule. No, you hold on to the promises of God. Why? Because the promises of God, they are yea and amen. Amen. So, so brethren, tonight, I want to encourage you. Do not for one minute allow the, the scoffers to get you distracted, to get you discouraged, to get you questioning your faith and questioning the word of God. No, the promises of God are yea and amen. They are going to come to pass. They are going to come to pass. They may be delayed, but they will come to pass. The God that we serve, he is a God of integrity and he will fulfill his promises to us. And you can take that to the bank. Because Jesus Christ is coming back. And his coming is very soon. We don't know when. But we know even as we continue to advance during the Kronos or sequential time. That that Kairos event, that significant event of the rapture is getting closer and closer. And I believe friends that it could happen in the year 2022. I am not setting dates. I'm not saying it is going to happen in 2022, but I am saying it can happen in 2022. The Bible says no man knows the day or the hour. We're not trying to predict and we're not trying to identify dates. But the Lord did say you will know when it is closed, even at the door, friends. Even at the door. And so we always need to live in a state of perpetual readiness. We always need to be in a place of, of holiness and righteousness. Repenting, you know, for our sins. You know, we need to ensure that we are always rapture ready. Because I'll tell you this. The Lord is not going to give an announcement. He's not going to, you know, ring a bell and say, I'm, re I'm coming in the next few minutes. No, it's just going to happen just like that one day. It's going to be an ordinary day. Just like any other day. Just like, you know, in the time of Noah. And then, just like that, it's going to happen. In the twinkling of an eye, we will be caught up. Just like that, without any warning, without any fanfare, without any announcement. It's going to happen in the instant, in the twinkling of an eye. And only those who are ready, only those who are looking towards the sky looking towards the return of the Lord are going to make it. No one is going to stumble through the rapture. No one is going to, you know, get up there by accident. No, friends. Do not deceive yourselves. The Lord is coming back for prepared people. The Lord is coming back for a bride that is without spot or wrinkle. The Lord is coming back for those who are looking towards the heavens, those who are looking towards his return. No one is going to make it up there by accident. No one is going to stumble into heaven. No, 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 no. You have to be deliberate and intentional in your walk with the Lord, living a holy life, a chaste life, living in a state of perpetual preparedness. Because friends, it is going to take the whole world by surprise. It's going to sneak up on all of us. And so only those who are living in a state of readiness will be caught up when the Lord comes. And there will be no time to get ready after the Lord comes because it's going to happen like that, as I said, in a flash. 
So friends, the time to get ready is now. Now is the time to get ready. And if you are watching this broadcast and you say, Preacher, I am not ready. I, you may be a backslider. You may have heard these things before, but you may have gotten derailed by the scoffers. You may have drifted from the Lord. I want to lead you into a simple prayer. It's not a magical prayer, but it's a simple prayer. It's a start in the right direction. Say this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner in need of a Savior. Lord Jesus, I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you were buried. And I believe that you raised again from the dead after three days. Lord Jesus, I accept you as my Savior and Lord. Forgive me of all of my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Friends, if you pray that prayer, I want to tell you that you have made the most important decision in your life. Or if you are recommitting your life to the lord again it's the most important decision that you can make we want to say a word of prayer of release over you even now so father right now i thank you for each person i would have said that prayer this evening and right now i break yokes and chains and burdens from off of their lives now in jesus name i loose them and set them free in the name of Jesus. I break every evil covenant that they may have made knowingly or unknowingly with the devil. We break and destroy those covenants and we release the fire of God to destroy those covenants right now in the name of Jesus. We loose them and set them free in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray that you are going to fill them with your Holy Spirit and power in Jesus name amen friends if you have said that prayer for the first time it's the first time that you've been born again you need to get water baptized you need to get in a Bible believing church I want to encourage you tell someone about your decision contact a Bible believing church tell them that you want to get baptized the reason for that is that is what is needed according to second, uh, according to Acts 2, 37 to 39. Uh, Peter said, repent, get baptized, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You need to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And so you need to get water baptized. Amen. And then I want to encourage you, get into the book of the Gospel of John. Yes, read the Gospel according to John uh, to strengthen your faith and strengthen your walk. Amen. Well, friends, I trust that you were blessed. I trust that you were encouraged. And I just want to encourage you. I just want to encourage you. You know, um, what I sense is that there are many things. There may be many things happening all around your life. There may be a lot of chaos and calamity and death and disappointment and so on. All sorts of bad news difficulties and challenges circling around you what i want to say to you is to anchor yourself in the word of god stand on the word of god you know declare the word of god when you wake up in the morning speak the word of god over your life the bible says that we walk by faith and not by sight do not walk by sight especially in this season of crisis there are many people you know, they're watching the crisis and they're allowing their faith to sink and to go under. This is exactly what happened with Peter. You recall that incident when the disciples, they were in a boat. They were in the middle of a, you know, a tempest. And Jesus was walking on the water. And then Peter, when he saw, you know, that uh, Jesus said it is I. Peter says, Lord, if it is you, tell me to come. And the Lord said, come. And Peter started to walk on the water. But what did he do? While he was walking on the water, he took his eyes off of Jesus because he was walking towards Jesus. But he took his eyes off of Jesus. 
he looked at the wind, he looked at the waves, and immediately, as he took his eyes off of Jesus, he began to sink. He would have drowned were it not for Jesus. And the Bible says that Jesus stretched out his hand and pulled him out. And then Jesus rebuked him. He says, why did you doubt? You know what caused Peter to doubt? When he took his eyes off of Jesus. He took his eyes off of Jesus. And instead, he placed his eyes on the crisis, on the calamity, on the wind, and the waves all around him. And because of that, it negated his faith. And he began to sink. What am I saying? I'm saying, friends, that is the same situation that we are in right now. We are in the midst of a crisis. There's all sorts of, of things happening all around you. The waves and the storms of life, they're blowing. Some of you, you have water coming into your boat. I want to say to you that no matter what is happening in your environment, do not put your eyes on the crisis. Do not put your eyes on the winds and the waves. Yes, you are aware that there's winds and waves around you. But keep your focus, keep your gaze on Jesus and Jesus Christ alone. Fix your eyes on Jesus and Jesus Christ alone. Just like Jonah. Jonah was in the, in, in, in the, the belly of a fish. He was in the belly of a fish, not knowing whether he was going to survive or not. And you know how Jonah described that situation? He says it is lying vanities. He refused to acknowledge what was happening in his environment. Instead, he focused on the Lord. And because of that, he was delivered. The fish vomited him out on the shore to safety. And friends, I want to say to you, we walk by faith and not by sight. We are not controlled by what is happening in our physical environment. We are controlled by the word of God. We are controlled by what is happening in the spiritual realm, the spiritual environment. I want to say to someone tonight, someone who is discouraged, you've been looking at all of the bad news, all of the negative things happening all around you. And because of that, your faith is failing. You're sinking. You're going under. I want to say to you tonight that there's more for you than against you. Yes, there is more for you than against you. You are on the winning side. All you need to do is fix your gaze on Jesus Christ. All you need to do is fix your gaze on the word of God. Confess the word of God. Whenever a thought comes into your, into your mind that is uh, contrary to the word of God, that is contrary to what God says about you, you don't have to accept that thought. You do not have to accept that thought. You can refute that. You can bring that thought captive. That is what Paul told us to do in in. in, in uh, 1 Corinthians 10. He says, take every thought captive and pull it down to, and bring it into submission, into the knowledge and lordship of Jesus Christ. You have that authority. Anything that goes against the word of God is lying vanities and you have the authority to cast down those thoughts, those imaginations. Yes, we believe that we are more than conquerors. We believe that God is always leading us into a triumphant procession. We are victors and not victims. We are overcomers. And so we, we get our strength, not by what is happening in the natural, but what God says about us, by who lives in us. That is where we get our strength from, from the supernatural. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And you need to remember that. You need to remind yourself of that reality, friends. We are overcomers. We are overcomers. This is what Jesus said to the disciples even as he went to the cross in John 16, 33. He says, in the world, there's tribulation. 
but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Jesus has overcome the world. Jesus is an overcomer. And where is Jesus? Jesus lives in you. So if Jesus lives in you, it means that you are also an overcomer. That is what you need to believe. That is what you need to remind yourself of, friends. When the chaos and the calamity is happening all around you, shift your gaze, shift your focus, shift and shift inwardly. Look at Jesus. Let your mind focus on Jesus. Let your mind focus on what God says about you as a son of God. Focus on the greatness of your God and not on the greatness of your problem. And when you focus on the greatness of your God, your problem are going to become like midgets. That is what we need to do. And so I want to encourage someone tonight. Do not, you know, you know, you know, imbibe all of this negative news and all of this negative stuff. You know, that will pollute your spirit. That is going to pollute your faith. It's going to dilute your faith. No. That's why it's very important that we need to monitor what comes through our eye gate. We need to monitor what comes through the air gate. We need to ensure that we are taking in the word of Almighty God. That is what is going to strengthen us. The Bible says, For faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So you need to, when you sense that your faith is under attack, when you sense that your faith is being threatened, plug yourself into the word of God. That is what is going to give your faith a boost. It's the word of God. Hear yourself saying the word of God. Hear yourself confessing the word of God. Speak the word of God. Yes, that is what we need to do, friends. And as you begin to immerse yourself in the word of God, you will find that you feel renewed, that you feel, you know, revitalized. Because the word of God is quick. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. It is able to pierce and divide. You know, it is able to pierce and cut away all of that nonsense from the other side. There's power in the word. And we need to put the word of God to work. Yes. Speak the word over your life. Speak the word over your situation. Use the word as a sword to cut away all of that fluff and all of that stuff that comes against you. Use the word of God as a sword to cut it down. Yes. Because there's power in the word, friends. And I trust that you are encouraged tonight. You know, you know, use that word. Immerse yourself in the word of God. Because the Bible says, Jesus and his word, they are one and the same. They are one and the same. Jesus Christ is the living word of almighty God. So I encourage you, you know, do not just be a sitting duck. You know, just taking in. What the enemy is dishing out. No. You go on the offensive. Use the word of God. Declare the word of God. Into your life. Over your life. Over your family. Declare it. Speak it. When you're getting up in the morning. Speak it. When you're going to bed in the night. Speak it. During the hours of the day. Whenever you sense that you're coming under attack. Speak out the word of God. Put pressure on your mouth to declare the word of God. Because when you speak the word of God, there's a, there's a chain reaction that takes place. In fact, sometimes God you know, releases the angels to go on assignment, to carry out that word and to fulfill that word. Your word releases chain, a chain reaction in the heaven leaves. There's power when you declare the word of God on your lips and on your tongue. There's power. You literally put the angels to go and fight on your behalf. Because the Bible says God has sent his word and his word cannot return to him void. But it shall accomplish that which he has sent it to accomplish. So we need to speak the word. No matter what you're facing, no matter what you're going through. Refuse to believe the lying vanities. Instead, choose to believe the word of God. No matter what you see in the natural. No matter what you hear in the natural. 
no matter what the scoffers say, you declare the word of God. Use the word of God as a tool, as a weapon against the works of the enemy. And you will be victorious. Amen and amen. Well, friends, I feel so charged up right now because of the word and the presence of Almighty God. And I sense even now that that spirit of heaviness that is hovering over some of you tonight has dissipated. That spirit of heaviness is leaving your presence even now because the presence of Almighty God has moved in. And so because the presence of God has moved in, that spirit of heaviness has to leave. It has to go. And so right now, in the name of Jesus, I command every spirit of depression, every spirit of heaviness to leave the people of God right now in Jesus' name. I drive out every unclean spirit, every spirit of heaviness, every spirit of depression. I command you to leave right now in Jesus' name. And we release a spirit of faith a spirit of boldness, a spirit of courage. Lord, we thank you that your spirit is coming even now into the presence of your people. I thank you, Lord, that where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty, there's freedom, there's joy in the presence of the Lord. So, Father, we just thank you for what you have done tonight. I thank you, Lord, that your presence is going to linger and is going to abide with your people throughout the night and throughout uh, the rest of their lives in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. We give you all the praise. So friends, I want you, you know, to rejoice in the Lord. The Bible says rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord because the Lord is with you. God is with you and greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. That is enough for us to rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord, friends. The joy of the Lord is your strength. God is strengthening you even now just because of his presence in your midst. He's releasing strength into your body. He's releasing health into your bones right now in Jesus' name. And so we give God all of the praise, all of the honor, all of the glory for great things that he has done and for great things he will continue to do in and through our lives. We give him all of the praise this evening. And so friends, we look forward to spending some more time with you in the presence of Almighty God. And so until next time, I want to I wanna challenge you to keep your feet on the ground, to look up, because your redemption draweth nigh. And of course, always remember, friends, that the kingdom of God is at hand. My name is Joel Fraser, the Kingdom Reformation Movement. We look forward to seeing you in our next broadcast. Until then, have a wonderful evening. Blessings.